Hello, photography. Uh, I wanted to show you some filters today. Um, I thought it might be something that um, would be fun to play with in some of your images. So let's go ahead and open up a picture. And oh, I'm going to open up this picture of my dad here. This would be a good one to work with. Okay. Um, well, filters you can find in a few different places. One area is right under image and adjustments and you have the photo filter. And so with this, um, it's basically applying this color over the picture. And over here, there's a sliding bar that it will control how much, uh, how much density the filter is. So that's very dense. If I go down here, there's more of the photo showing through, more of the original photo showing through. And then if I click on this, I can adjust the color that I'm using. So I might do like, um, say green, and I've got a green filter, or maybe I want to cool the picture down and use like more of a well, maybe more of an aqua color here. Oh, was that blue aqua cyan? Um, and and then again, you can like make it more dense, or you can make it less dense. So that's one way to do it. And again, that is located under image adjustments and photo filter. You can make your own filter. Um, what you could do is you go into layer, click new, and you'll notice I have this pop up. Now, last time we were working with this, um, I actually had you duplicate the photo so that it was on top of itself for editing purposes. Um, this is a blank layer. So you know it's blank because you see this little pattern here. It's like a checkerboard. So that, that stands for transparency in Photoshop. And um, what I can do if I just want to lay a color on top of my picture, you know, like let's say, oh, I don't know, maybe this orange color. And I could go over here um, to the gradient tool. If I, anytime I hold the button down over a tool, it'll bring up some other options. So this is the paint bucket. And then I can just paint that whole thing. Oh, lost my photo. And what I'm going to do here is up in this spot, you have these um, layer options um, that allow um, you to shift the way the layers are interacting with each other. So I might click darken or I might click multiply. That's that's kind of nice right there. Almost looks like a crazy storm. And then over here where it says opacity, I can change that and I can adjust how opaque it is. And, you know, there's different things that you could do with this. Um, you can also create like a vignette. So like I might darken this just a bit. And then I have my layer here. I can take the eraser tool and we'd want to make that eraser a bit bigger. Let's see how big it is. Yeah, it's even go a little bit bigger than that. And I'd want to have a soft eraser for this. And then what you could do is erase, well, maybe like your subject here. Let's let it catch up with me. It's thinking, I'm sure. There it is. And then you can kind of um, really create like a vignette around your image. And then I can drop the opacity of this so it's not quite as noticeable. Just a little bit to bring a little bit more attention to my subject. Um, something else you could do, and I'll just go ahead and delete this. Let's make a new one. You can do something kind of funky and fun. Maybe I'll use my brush tool, and that's right over here. You've got some options here too, but I would recommend the brush. The pencil is for like more precision drawing. The brush is something that works better for photos. And let's go a little bit bigger with this. And we're gonna make it softer. And yeah, let's, just, let's just paint. We're gonna do some painting. We'll let that show up here. Oh, there we go. Doing a little bit of painting here. That's kind of strange. Let's throw another color in there. What about some yellow? That's interesting. Put a little bit of yellow. Boop, boop, boop. Maybe a little 
little spot over here. And then how about green? Let's do some green. Put some green in here. Yeah. And I feel like we need some blue. Let's get some blue in there. Oh, I missed red. We need a little bit of red. Maybe a spot here. <laughs> Just looks like I'm making a grand old mess of this picture. How about red? We'll go up here at the top. And we'll throw splash of red in there too. Let me make something a little more. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of pleasing. Okay, and so now once you've made this filter, you can apply it to your image, you know? So I can click darken. That's pretty intense right there. Or multiply. Um, and you just have to experiment with these. That It just, there's so many different ways that they combine and they have so many different effects that you really just have to play around and see what you like. And sometimes you find something really cool, you know, like there's a ton in here. I can color the picture. I can adjust the hues of the picture. That's like kind of subtle. That's actually kind of, that can be kind of nice. Pin light. That's just kind of a strange one. Lighten. You can try darkening. So anyway, lots of uh, kind of fun things to do with making your own filters. All right. So let me go ahead and turn that off again. Um, there is another place that you should look and um, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my picture now because the editing that I'm gonna do now is actually gonna happen to the picture itself. And if you go up here to filter, there are so many things that you can play around with. I mean, it's really pretty intense. Um, one I want to show you in specific is blur. And then I wanted to show you sharpen because I feel like those are things that you're going to tend to use a little bit more in your images. And if we go to blur, um, there's a lot of different options in here too. But like, for instance, I have the Gaussian blur. And what this is going to do is it's just going to make a, like a blur throughout the whole picture. It kind of simulates like um, if you have an area that's out of focus in a photo. And so like before, you know, my dad was focused. Now he's not. But let's say you had some distracting elements in the background. Like, oh, I don't know, this train. Although that was kind of the point of the picture. But let's just say we wanted to get rid of it. You could do this. Um, that might be a little bit too intense. Let me back this up just a bit. Let's say like that. And then I can take my eraser tool, kind of like I did when I was working with the color filters. And then I can erase the parts that I want to be sharp. And so this can be a way to make certain parts of your picture really stand out. You know, like maybe I want my dad to really stand out here, although I kind of find his glass is sort of annoying there. Um... And you can sort of recreate, like, depth of field. I'd have to get his hat and change my brush size. But I just wanted to give you a quick um, look at how that can how that can work. Um, let's, let's step back. I don't actually want to do that right now. And I want to undo that filter, too. Let's look at another one. Um, lots of different blurring filters that you can play with. Um, let's try the motion blur. This is kind of neat. And so with this one, you can simulate movement. If we keep going this way, it just looks like I got a shaky photo. And I can adjust the angle that the movement's happening in. And so that can kind of be an interesting thing. And just like before, I can erase the areas that I want to be sharp. So you can almost make it look like that train's moving, you know? Um, let me show you another one. Let's step back. And then, honestly, you just have to kind of go in here and really experiment because there's so much you can do in here. Um, radial blur. Let's do this one. This is neat. 
Uh, so the radio blur, this is kind of like if you were using a slower shutter and you were spinning your camera or rotating your camera, um, you can adjust the amount of the blur here, and then you can adjust where the blur is happening using these sliding bars. Now, my internet connection is a little bit slow, so um, it's having a hard time keeping up with me here. But I just wanted you to see this. The zoom um, is really neat, too. Oh, you can see it caught up finally. It actually moved that blur or that uh, sharp spot over a little bit. Um, you can also click zoom. And uh, you might have to do this on your own, but it'll look like it's zooming in, you know. So this is be more like a twist effect, but then you can also like zoom in with your with your uh, shot. And uh, they look pretty good. I mean, it really does look like you did it for real. So let me close this because uh, that's a pretty intense tool there. And I want to show you um, the sharpen tools as well. Now, if I look at this picture of my dad. He's honestly pretty sharp, so this wouldn't be the best example of that. So let me open up another picture. I'm going to open up a picture of the submarine. Look at this image. Uh, it's a better illustration of what you can do when you're sharpening something. Um, first off, let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see this better. I uh, was able to get the screw head really sharp here, but I kind of missed the boat on the main subject. So that's a little unfortunate. Uh, and uh, to sharpen, I would I would duplicate the background just so that way we're not, um, you know, ruining the original and I can go back really easily. Uh, let's go into filter. And sharpen. I've got some different options here. You've sharpen, sharpen more, smart sharpen. I, I tend to go for the unsharpened mask. And what this will do is it'll bring up a sliding bar, which allows you to adjust the sharpness. Now, I feel like it's overdone right now. That is a lot. It's 142%. And you can kind of see that oh, it's really kind of bringing out a lot of the pixels. It is more crisp. But that crispness is coming uh, at a sacrifice for quality. It's starting to look like it, it, the resolution is kind of dropping a little bit. So let me go down just a bit. I don't want it to be quite that much. That might be mm -mm, a little bit less, a little bit less. That might be better right there. And now just so you can see the difference as like a before and after. Um, this was the before, the original picture, and then this is the after. And you can see now my dial is just a bit sharper. And if I zoom out, you won't see it as much when you zoom out. But there's a difference. And sometimes that's all you need to really like sharpen that picture just enough to really make it pop. Um you, there's no substitute to getting a sharp photograph in camera. Um, you really can't make something that's blurry sharp, you know, especially like something over here. There's just nothing you can really do about that. But if you're in the ballpark, like if you're close with your sharpness, these tools can really help you make those improvements that you need to make. Um, I'm not going to go into all the other filters. There is a lot here, and I think you should try some of it out. It's fun. There's like things you can play with and see what they do. Um, one, I guess I could show you is liquify. Um, I'm used to using this more in Photoshop, but I think it works here too. Um, what you can do is adjust the size of your brush and then you can try out some of these different um, tools. Now that one didn't seem to do much. Let me go back to this one. And it'll allow you to kind of like do some weird things with your picture. Probably not something that I'd actually want to do with my photo here. But you might find a use for it. It might be kind of an interesting thing. Almost like it looks like I'm making this gauge look like it's melting. And then uh, when you kind of have it the way you want it, and by the way, you can play with these. There's lots of other options. This makes it expand. This twists it. This creates a wave. This rotates it. I mean, you can play with all these. And then I can just say, okay, 
and we'll see what that looks like. Wow, that's really pretty crazy. Um, and like always, uh, if you are going to want to save this, you can go up here and you can, you know, either export it as a JPEG or save it as a PSD. Um, and so that way you can save your changes. Um, probably the most important thing that I should say from the very beginning is anytime you're doing these kind of edits to your pictures, you should really think about having a copy of your image um, before you start doing the edits. Um, now, a lot of times I'll sort of make that copy by um, creating different layers and having my original in a lower layer, but I think it's just best practice to always have your original file that's untouched and unedited, so that way it's preserved and you can always go back to it at a future time. Okay, well, hopefully uh, that shows you some different ways of filtering your image. And just as like a quick review, we went into image and adjustments and we played with photo filters. We tried making some of our own filters over here by using layers and then just kind of coloring and making some patterns and whatnot. And then we went into the actual filter tab where there is seriously a ton of things that you can play with in here. And I think it's worth experimenting a little bit, um, especially if um, you're new to a Photoshop-like program. All right, well, have a wonderful night.